Hello and welcome to On Landscape. I'm here with Joe Cornish and we are looking at Capture One after one of our recent demos uh, showing off some photographs from Yosemite. Um, a few people were interested in how Joe works with Capture One and what's available. So uh, here we are with a default window from Capture One and, and you've been using Capture One for quite a while with Lightroom, haven't you? Yeah, I have uh, and I think that uh, it's important to emphasise that it's another tool, it's another form of language, but it's a raw converter in the way that Lightroom is. It has most of the same capabilities as Lightroom as well. Uh, and it's really good, uh, fa fantastic in fact. I, I think uh, just a, very briefly, uh, over the course of the last 10 years or so, Capture One when it first came out was definitely, I think it actually preceded Lightroom and it was really, really advanced at the time. And then Adobe produced Lightroom and it was fairly basic to begin with and then it improved drastically. And then for a while Capture One got a little bit left behind. It stuck in the mud almost. It, it was. Right? And then uh, as the years have gone by, they've, you know, they've each in turn improved. And Capture One is now in version 11. So it's a, it's a long way from where it was 15 years ago when it first appeared. Uh, and, and I think it's a brilliant, brilliant bit of software. Hmm. I really love it. And it was originally really a tool for using the um, phase camera digital files, and, and it could be used for different raw files. Um, but quite recently, it's become the supplied software with Sony cameras, I think. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, I think that's right. It's the, And it's difficult to know whether that's because Sony uh, they just cut a deal with phase or whether they feel that it works better with their files. But I mean, I find it, it works great. And the, I mean, the main reason I've used it as long as I have is because uh, of the fact that you use phase one files and it's obviously optimized for that. And it has a few special uh, tools for technical camera users, such yeah. as the uh, lens cast calibration, which is almost indispensable. Yes. Um, but uh, having now also used it significantly a lot with uh, the Sony files, I've, I'm very happy with what I've been able to get with it. I still also use and teach Lightroom, but uh, I think it, it, if I'm left to my own devices, I'll typically use go for uh, Capture One at the moment. Yeah, and, what, and it's worth saying we are here on the, the default layer for Capture One when yes. you open it, but you work in a different environment typically. It's very customizable, isn't it? It is, and um, I think well, just let's have a look at the at the interface um, briefly. I think also just perhaps before we do that, even it's worth pointing out that the way I work is just to use a, a generic session uh, to open pictures, which I can browse browse the computer and just find. Uh, so as it happens, it's in my pictures folder on my laptop. Yeah. Um, you know, I keep a few set a few sessions which are. I do very manually with my Mac, and uh, and I just find them here. So this is uh, uh, this is from work I did in January uh, when I was up here, uh, and as you can see, uh, it's in some ways quite similar to Lightroom. The image is in the middle, uh, the uh, and and then there's a column on either side. But unlike Lightroom, the default sets the uh, the working tools on the left hand side. However, and also unlike Lightroom, you can change it. So you can simply go to view, and there's obviously a lot of different options here. You can hide the browser or place the browser somewhere else. You can hide the tools. You can put the tools on the right, like this, and that places the browser on the left. Yeah. Uh, and for people who are familiar with Lightroom, this is in many ways a more natural way to work. Yeah. So that's the way I typically do, in fact. And whereas with with Lightroom, uh, it's usually necessary to go back to library if you want to browse. Mm. Uh, with Capture One, you don't. You just uh, basically shunt things around like this. So there's no develop mode or, or library mode or whatever. Or separate mode. Yeah. No, absolutely. And the, the browser size, uh, as you'd expect, is configurable. Uh, so you can, uh, there's a little bit less space on a laptop. You can change the size of the thumbnails uh, for browsing if you want to. Uh, and when you want to work on the image, you can easily enough move back to making 
the image itself larger. Um, the one thing that is slightly inferior, uh, I think from a viewing point of view, is that with this you can you have two size options uh, in terms of viewing. In, yeah. in Lightroom you've you've got many different size options in the, yes. in the breakdown. With Capture One, if you want to view with let's say a bit more workspace or a bit more white space, I should say, yeah. than that, you have to go up to uh, preferences and you'll find appearance and there there is a margin a proof margin for that particular okay. the second yeah. secondary otherwise it's just full size uh, you do also have options for different background colors so say dark or black or uh, as you know i prefer to use white because i'm a printer yeah. uh, and um and so that's slightly more long-winded than in lightroom but not not a lot uh, so the default setting is actually, which you, you get to like that by clicking on the little icon there, uh, is full frame. And enlargement can be done by two finger swipe like this. Okay, yeah. Uh, so which is, is great. And you can also do it with uh, this little slider up here. Uh, if you double click it, it reverts to standard fit size. Uh, double click it again and it jumps to one to one. So most of those sorts of controls are quite familiar, uh, and some of them are, are almost identical, but there are significant differences. So, as always with these things, if you if you do if you if you are a, a Lightroom user and um, and you change to Capture One, the first two weeks are a bit traumatic. It becomes a bit awkward. Yeah. Quite learning. But but very soon you, you learn it, and it's a it is actually I think a, a joy to use once you get the hang of it, and part of that is because the right hand now, the right hand tool column, is composed of a series of tabs. So if we run along these tabs, you can, so the, the first one is essentially the, the library tab. Yes. The second is actually the capture tab, which is the one that, that most of us will never use because it's when you work tethered. Okay, yeah. Um, and, and that's one of the, the power of capture one is built around tethered uh, computing is it, it's because when the first phase one backs came out, this is the only it. way that yes. you could see the yes. picture. So, uh, because there was no image on the back of the of the back itself. Uh, and then there's a, a lens correction tab here. This one is the color tab. And each of these has, if you look down, you can see a series of specific tools or controls. And then after that, there is the Exposure tab, and then the Details tab, as they now call it. I think so. this is where a lot of people get confused with, with um, Capture One, is there's, there's a, a hell of a lot of menus going on in, inside each of those tabs. It looks complicated, it doesn't it? It looks very complicated to begin with. So I'm, I, I totally get that, and I do... Uh, you know, I do accept that's the case. Now, it, okay, let me just try something. We're in the uh, in the so-called details tab. Yes. But let's just close down these fields first of all, uh, because it, with it, with them being open, it all looks terribly complicated. A bit intimidating. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so they're all closed for now. Now, if you go control click on anywhere in the column, you'll see this little panel will a appear. And add tool brings up all of the tool tools that are currently not in this particular okay. drop down. Yeah, so you're moving things from one the menu to the exactly. If you go remove tool, then it shows you the uh, the options that are in that menu currently. Yeah. Now it may sound strange, but I personally, for example, never use Mare, so I could. I would probably just go to, if I was going to customize uh, this setup, I would go to Mari and get rid of it. I would then go to, I'm sure you can do this multiple, multiply. Um, this is how I've always done it. Uh, am I using noise reduction? Hardly ever. I can always go back to it just by adding, adding it again. Uh, and am I using film grain? Not really. Yeah. And so on. So you can get to a point where Spot removal, I might use sharpening. Well, it's got to be somewhere, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and focus is, I don't use. 
I don't know what it is. I noticed there you can remove the tool tab, so you can remove the capture tab if you wanted and, and reorder them. You and, can. Yeah, so you and can make absolutely. it you can make it look like Lightroom. You can you can make it look exactly like like Lightroom and you can radically simplify it. And indeed there is a, a window up here which which gives you various different workspace options, including simplified um, and I've actually never used any of these, but I'm pretty sure that any anybody who's confident with their computing can configure yeah. this bit of kit into a form that's actually very easy to use and very enjoyable. And while I'm, I'm a huge admirer of Lightroom, the beauty of Capture One is you can really make it your own Yeah. because of this. Uh, I still use the drop-down tabs, but mostly I work in the, in the detail drop-down, and that's mainly because that's where you find layers. Now, layers is amazing because it's it makes it like Photoshop and for those for those of you out there who are uh, Photoshop familiar the beauty of layers in uh, in Capture One is that it emulates all of the the way that we paint with light in mm. Photoshop which I think is the, the I, I'm speaking personally is the uh, the best way for landscape photographers to work incidentally to make layers meaningful you absolutely have to have the exposure tool uh, with it and there's various other tools and in fact the beauty of this too is you can just move things around so I put the exposure underneath the layers and I would probably also have a white balance tool in there like this and, and those are the those are the ones that I actually probably use the most so I have a white balance below immediately below layers it's looking like light and exposure. Already. it's already looking like that exactly yeah. but with a, a little bit more configurability this is, a lot more. this is what I've seen as one of the advantages of capture one which is the ability to make local adjustments um, very powerfully yes um, we can um, we can make the uh, a local adjustment like you would in Lightroom. Yes. But uh, use any tool that's available as a local adjustment. Literally, almost any tool, and certainly local color tools. Now, uh, the HSL, Hue Saturation Luminance, in is a terrific tool in Lightroom, but it's global only. Yes. And that's not a problem in Capture One. You can you can do it locally as well using what they call the advanced. Uh, color control, yeah. um, which actually is in some ways even superior, I would say, to, to HSL. Uh, so whether you, you can use that globally and you can use it locally. And just recently, uh, Capture One, have, we're just running through a, a few images here just to make it a little bit more interesting um, over time. And I, I'd also just like to point out that uh, the way it's loaded, I see, um, I mean, I did know this, but um, it, this is different to Lightroom, which tends to load things chronologically. Yes. Uh, this has loaded images in uh, in camera type. So, for example, these images are made on phase one here, and then you'll see that this is the end of my phase one activity when I was here, and then these are the first ones of the uh, made with the Sony. So, um, but yes, to go back to your point, Tim, the uh, uh, layers, and let's see. We'll, We've got a, a case here. Yes. We can see that uh, that I've created a, a number of layers, uh, and we can turn them all off like this. So that's the default image. Uh, there may be a quick way of doing it, but actually, I've never really tried to work out what it was. Maybe it's Control Click. No, but anyway, um, you can have as many layers as you want. There's now no limit on the number of layers. All right. There previously was, a, initially it was a limit of five, and then I think they increased it, and now it seems to be unlimited, which is fantastic. But the new trick that they've got in this version is that the layers have an opacity slider. So if you look carefully at the image as I'm flicking this on and off, you can see I, I wanted to take down that area of rather strong sunlight yes. on the left-hand side. Um, I guess it's I've done that well, you can see with brightness. Uh, but let's say I'd slightly overcooked it, uh, but I, I didn't want to, maybe I'd used multiple different adjustments. Yes. I just wanted to feather down the effect. Then just as in Photoshop, you can do that by changing the opacity. So if you take the opacity right off, it all comes all the way back there. And it gives a, it expresses it as a percentage in the opacity um, box on the right hand side here 
Um, and that's just a really nice, convenient control mm. and a, a so big when, improvement. So when you clicked on a layer, all the controls you can see are just working on that layer. So everything you do within that layer is is localized. It so, is. And yeah. you have to click back onto the background before you get your normal global corrections. Is that correct? Correct. So background is here. Yeah. Uh, and also, if you, if you want to see the mask, I wonder if um, if we can do that. I, I hardly ever do this. What I do is is if I draw the mask. So let's say I here's my brush, uh, and and to change the size, by the way, unfortunately, it doesn't yet use two finger swipe. You have to right click or control click, and yeah. a little adjustment panel comes up. Yeah. But if I now go like that, you can see on the oh, okay, you, you yeah. can see where uh, where it is. I think there's probably an always show mask here. Um, here, always display oh, mask. Display. So when you're clicked, yes. So now if I run through the layers, oh, yeah, okay, you yes. can see, see where I've worked. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I mean it's just painting with light, just the uh, same as one does in Photoshop, really. Uh, and yeah, so uh, and the beauty of it is, uh, and it encourages you to. Um, let's see if I can turn that off a second. Uh, to think in in terms of only display when drawing. There we are. Um, in terms of of just using light to uh, to control the flow and the and the tonality and the color throughout the image. One one of the things that attracted me to it recently is is wanting to go beyond some of the limitations in the HSL slider in terms of um, colour selections yeah. uh, and hue, hue selections where you, you want to limit changes uh, and, and making colour changes within Lightroom is quite difficult and having to switch back to Photoshop and have separate files, having a separate TIFF bit file. Bit of a pain. Bit of a pain. Mm. So I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how, how this can work over a series of files. Absolutely and uh, perhaps that's a good moment to uh, to look at the HSL tool. Um, I just wonder if I can find an image where, where uh, it perhaps displays um, some of these attributes well. Uh, I think first of this, this image certainly has quite a few layers, five layers in it. Um, if we look at the background to begin with uh, and as uh, I mean every, everything, I don't know about you, but I I personally fine tune every image uh, for white balance. Yes. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, it just seems the right thing to do. Um, and at the moment, in the let's not forget, we we're still looking at at a very slightly changed default uh, pattern here. Yeah. Um, obviously, if I wanted to use the color uh, local color editor, I could just go back to the the color tab, and I will probably find I hope I can find the color editor here at the bottom. Um, which, but I can also add it if yes. we go back to where I was, and that actually is more convenient from my point of view. I generally like to predominantly work in one column, and especially when I'm working with layers, which when I'm doing developing, I usually am. So I'm going to add the color editor here, and when the color editor springs up for the first time, this is what you see. It's mm. called the basic setting. And I'll be honest with you, I've used it once or twice. Um, it, it's, it, it works fine, but I think for most uh, dedicated landscape photographers, the advanced setting here So is, the, the, the basic is very similar to HSL, isn't it? It's got a few channels you can select yes, for colours and play it around is, with them. It is, absolutely. And, and you can see them. Well, let's just quickly re revert. You can see the way the colour wheel is broken down slightly asymmetrically. Uh, which is curious, but I'm sure that face have their reason for doing that. And you can see that you can you've got you can control the selection area is is shown by a target in the middle. Yeah. Um, and so let's say, for example, well, looking at this image, what m might we like to do? Let's say we wanted to to find uh, I don't know maybe the warm color and bring it out a little bit more. Yeah. That might be a, a case of looking at the reds. That and this is. We're shortly going to see why I don't use this tool, yes. okay? Um, if we just push the saturation to the right, you can see it has done just that. It has picked out the warm colours yeah. in the image. But we've got the yellows and the reds. And the reds, yeah. Now, yes, you can control them by doing this. 
So you can you can twist these around, yeah. and you can also control the smoothness, which is to say, basically the feather, the blend. Yeah. The so yeah. if you now look at this wheel, you can see that there's a there's a bigger extent, so it's bleeding more into the surrounding colours, which you would think give a slightly more organic flow of of, of that control. I push the saturation up pretty high there, by the way. Um, so I wouldn't generally do that. This is just to see which colours are being affected. Absolutely, yeah. And, and by the same token, if you take it a long way, and you can also change the hue. So, you know, if you think it, you can make it redder, more crimson, let's say, or you can go the other way and make it more yellow or orange. Yeah. So that's exactly the same as HSL in, in Lightroom. Um, and it also has a luminosity or a lightness control. So you can make it make those same tones, the selected tones, lighter or darker yeah. and don't forget we're still working globally here so this is on the whole of the image I'll just double click the sliders that too is common with Lyra um, thank you and that just takes it back to the default so there's no now no apparent effect however the advanced tool it basically does do the same thing you can see that I've already used the advanced tool here yes. but this time you can take a you take your pipette on the bottom right and target any tone or colour that you want, just as you can actually, to be fair, with Lightroom and its little, um, it has that, that little kind of uh, crosshairs yes. for control. Yeah. Uh, and in the case of, of Capture One, let's say we were going to try and target this sort of warm tone in here. You can click there. And also, by the way, very easy in Capture One with two finger swipe to enlarge. So you want to really be clear about where you're going, click, and, and you can see that that's selected that particular colour. And it's done so, you can see on the colour wheel, uh, in this particular way, with a, with a default smoothness of 20, presumably pixels, I'm not quite sure what that is, yeah. but it, it's a feather. And you can also see, by looking at the colour wheel, that that colour is not super saturated. Yeah, so it's not select saturated yellows, it's just set selecting muted Relatively, relatively muted yellows. In theory, it, it wouldn't then affect uh, the fully saturated yellows. Mm. However, it has one very clever tool here. If you want to choose all colours of that of that particular hue, you can click this little symbol down here, and it will now choose all yellows and reds of of any saturation. Yeah, and push them. So you've got quite a lot of control in that way. And another really interesting thing, and this is a, a trick that a lot of uh, Photoshop um, people love uh, about Capture One, I'm just going to go back to normal view, is this. You can reverse it. Everything but. Everything but those colours. So let's say you wanted to get rid of all the blues and greys and any greens that you saw in there. You can now take the saturation slider and go like that. So that's a kind of, that's actually quite an interesting bit of local toning. Yeah. You could say if you wanted to do it as a black and white, but targeting a specific color. Yeah. And I mean, we've gone rather advanced rather quickly here. We'll try, try to give an introduction, but. Yeah, dem demonstrating some of the capabilities before we look at the details. Yeah. Anyway, that so that's that. And the beauty of it, it's very easy to get rid of it. So. We just hit the little minus key here, and we're back to where we started. So what we're effectively showing here is that, that uh, the advantage of this over Lightroom is, is obviously more accurate colour control and colour manipulation. I can see that just from seeing that one tool there. I think it's, uh, although it's different in design, it reflects the, uh, the power that you have in Photoshop. Mm. So I think for a, a Photoshop user, um, this is a very natural raw converter to use, perhaps ironically, given that it's a, not an Adobe product. Um, and, and to be fair to Phase 1, they've, uh, although obviously they're rivals, I'm not sure if they're busy rivals, but certainly rivals, um, they, they, I've always found them very open uh, about their dependence uh, for their customers on Photoshop. So, you know, they say, look, you know, we don't really regard this as a printing medium. Yes. You know, you're going to go to Photoshop to print from. Um, and they know that their customers do that. And most of their customers are, you know, they are either uh, professionals or um, colour specialists or they're um, advanced amateurs or enthusiasts or however you want to put it. But they, they, they're kind of aiming it at a relatively advanced 
user, you could say. And maybe that's why they're comfortable about leaving it with this rather complex looking interface. But it doesn't have to be complex. So we're going to take this and we're going to approach it from, um, as we did in our previous Lightroom tutorials, looking through some of the panels one at a time to, and, and using them on some example pictures. Right. So the next instalment, I think, we'll be looking at the um, the exposure tools and the histogram tools that we might approach and, yes. and the white balance. So those first tools you you use when you try and bring a picture in and, to, and, and bring it up to uh, a level. Where you can start working. Absolutely, it. keep it. Yeah, keeping it simple at that point, and um, and and then we can take it further. But I think yeah, that's a really good idea. So thank you very much, Joe. Pleasure.